With over 35 years of ministry, Mount Zion Church is located in Clarkston, Michigan. You may have seen us while driving an I-75 just north of Great Lakes Crossing. We invite you today to join us as we go inside to hear a fresh and relevant word in this new day. Mount Zion, helping you experience the best life. Back in 1978, when I graduated from ministry training, I received the laying on of hands. And Sister M.D. Beale, a great prophetess from the Latter Rain Revival, prophesied and said, the day will come when there will be a visitation. And you will receive the mantle of Elijah that speaks of the double portion. And Elijah's ministry, in a prophetic sense, talks about turning the hearts of the fathers to the children, the children to the fathers. It talks about a blessing that God said he's going to send upon the land. And he said, in this blessing, there would be a power of resurrection. And I really believe with all my heart we're in that time. I believe we're in our time. And I'm not saying this is just for me. I believe this is for the body of Christ. He said, I want you to go into a land you've never been in. I want you to go to a level you've never been in before, says the Lord. And in that land, there's going to be a double portion. It's the inheritance of the firstborn. The Bible says that Jesus Christ came. And do you know he purchased an inheritance for us? The Bible says we're heirs with Christ, joint heirs together with him. The inheritance of the firstborn son the Bible says our big brother, if you would, in Romans chapter 8, he wants to give that to his people. It's time for us to take a step in a level we've never walked in before. Amen? Look what this next verse of Scripture says. It says, And they shall build the old waste places, and they shall raise up the former generate desolations. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God, and you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory you shall boast. I'm talking about a great blessing God has for us. But the key to this new place, and this is what I want you to see here, is these people are doing something. They're not just a people looking for comfort. They're not just a people looking for compassion. They're not looking for just somebody to do something for them, but they said, now wait a second. God wants me to step out of my comfort zone and realize that he has called me. God wants the local churches to step out of their comfort zone and say, the Lord has called us. We have to make a difference in the world in which we live, amen? And this fullness is going to come through conflict. That's why a lot of you have been in training. Anybody say, yeah, I've been in conflict training. Yes, it's happening. You're the first fruits. Aren't you glad to be a first fruit? You say, I feel fruity from the conflict I've been in. I want to quit. No, no, keep on going. Keep on going, says the mighty God, because the fullness is going to come when a people realize, quit living your life as if it's about you and you've got to fix all these things. I want to take you to a place that's beyond you, says the mighty God. I want to take you to the place that's above you, says the mighty God. That's what this next verse of scripture says. And it, it talks to us about how important it is for us to go beyond ourselves. And do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? Now read this part with me. And you are not your own. Hmm, why am I not my own? Well, you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, this is kind of an uncomfortable thought in our present day society that we've been purchased. Because when Jesus Christ died on the cross, we think, oh, the blood, the blood has caused me to be forgiven of my sins. Amen, that's true. But according to the Bible, that blood also purchased you. You've been bought with a price and you were very expensive, says the mighty God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him would not perish, but would have eternal life. You have to understand something for you to get to the place where you are today. God was involved in your life, and God made the provision for you, says the mighty God. And you have to realize that there's a place that God wants to take you where you say, wait a minute, I'm going to quit focusing on my problems. I'm going to even quit focusing on my 
here. I know what God says he's going to do for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to live my life like it's not my own. Come on. I put up there writing your own program. Years ago, I was helping somebody who was involved in a rehab program. And as I was working with them in the program, the program director said something I've been uh, thinking about ever since. Because when they said it, I thought, well, that's a, that's a very good thought. And they said, you know, when you come into this program, this is our program, you'll never get better if you're writing your own program. But how many know most of us like to write our own program? Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm only standing on your word. If you'd make this person go away, if you'd even fix this situation, you'd just know what I could do in Jesus' name. Lord, you know I can't do such and such unless you do such and such. And Oh, Father... What are you going to do? The Lord said, well, what I want you to do is recognize your life is not your own. Recognize you were bought with a price. And if you'd have faith in me, if you would trust in me, you'd quit writing your own program, says the mighty God. Because I have a program that doesn't just have compassion and doesn't just have comfort, but it has conquest, says the mighty God. And you could never get where I want to take you, says the mighty God, as long as you're in control and writing your own program. So if you would let go, thus saith the Lord, if you would let go, say it with me, I'm going to let go. I'm going to let go, and I'm going to let God. I'm going to turn my life over to him completely, and I'm going to trust that God can do something according to the scriptures, is exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Can you give him a praise on that? It's time for us to move to that level. Amen. Look at this next verse of scripture. It says, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in what? The wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I believe in the anointed word. I've been talking about it last week. I talked about preaching, how important preaching is because it gives us the faith to live in a world that's beyond us. And we have to understand something. When we get to a certain place in God where it doesn't seem like we're going any farther, it's time for us to admit we need his wisdom not our own. Come on. We need to have something from him that he alone can give to us. And that's why we have to walk in the fullness of all that God has for us. This next verse of scripture confirms that because this is a time when we need to move forward, says the mighty God. Amen. He said, we speak wisdom among those who are what? How many want to be mature? Raise your hand anyway. Okay. <laughs> Yet not the wisdom of this age, that's why I'm telling you what the wisdom of the age is, because we have to know it's different, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God that's in a mystery. It is the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for what? What did he do that for? Did he say just for his glory? No, he said for our glory. You know, the Bible says all things work together for good to those who love God are called according to his purpose. For those that he foreknew, he calls. Those that he calls, he justifies. And those that he justified, he hath glorified. Wow. If God be for me, who can be against me? That's why, church, I got to go to the level God wants to take me and walk in the wisdom that's beyond myself because God has a plan for our glory. God has a plan that exceeds anything that we could think of ourselves. Wednesday night, I was sharing a story, and I'm going to share it again with you today with a different perspective to that. This past week, I was working downstairs. I, every once in a while, I'll give this motivation to clean up my notes and my books and kind of get more organized Feeling like if I'm more organized, I can be more productive. Usually don't work, but it sounds good in the meantime. But anyway, as I'm going through this thing, I find an old notebook that has some of my notes. And this was a sermon from 1983. And uh, I, I never have preached from notes. That's why after a while I gave up the pulpit and that because I never used notes anyway. But I did really like my notes because one of the things I was always afraid of is that I would repeat myself. 
So I like to write things down, and then after I'd get a word, I'd go back and make sure I hadn't repeated myself. And uh, one day, it's like the Lord would speak to me. He says, hey, you always tell everybody that you're praying for the word, and whatever I want you to preach, you're going to preach. Well, what if I want you to repeat yourself? Like, hmm, I guess I want to preach what you want unless you're repeating yourself, because that's embarrassing. Anyway, it, it was a lesson that he taught me. And so I'm really living it today because I'm actually preaching part of something I shared this past Wednesday night. <laughs> but anyway, what my emphasis on that this week was how that I read a verse that gave me the capacity to see beyond the natural realm into the supernatural realm of God. And I want to talk a little bit more and amplify the story to reach the other part because this is where I am today in God. Most of you are familiar with the story how that when we bought our very first building, the Lord challenged us with a building that was way beyond the cost, ability, the price of the people that were gathered together. We looked at a beautiful church. It was kind of new. The congregation had relocated or wanted to relocate because they had all kinds of church problems, church splits, and they thought they'd do better in another location. So this beautiful church is for sale way beyond our price range. So we're looking at, yeah, that sounds good. And I'm like, but we can't afford it. So I was praying, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, if you'll go the way of spirit, you'll possess things that others have not possessed before. And I, I knew it was talking to me about the way of spirit is the way of faith. And I also knew, he said, that's the bill they want you to buy. When we talked to the realtor and said we wanted it, of course, we knew that we couldn't get a mortgage, so we were thinking of a land contract. So he said, well, you have to at least go to the bank and show that you tried. So, of course, we tried, and they kind of laughed. Ah, ha, ha, yeah, we're going to give you a mortgage. You're just starting out. And our financials did not look too good, if you can imagine. But anyway, we went to the people and said, we'd like to go for a land contract. Uh, we'll give you 40000 down, and we'll pay the rest on long contract. We talked to the bank. They said after three years, they'd give us a mortgage. So we're just asking for a short term. And they said, okay, we'll, we'll take the land contract, but we, we want 45 down rather than 40. And we're like, oh, it doesn't matter to us. We don't have 40, so what's another five, you know? <laughs> so we said, okay, we're going to do that. And so we had to have a down payment. We did everything we could to raise that. We, we were having bake sales. People were making sacrificial giving, but uh, the money wasn't coming in too well. But I, I had, had a time of prayer where the Lord reinforced my faith. I shared it with the group. We just knew God was going to do something. Believe it or not, the very day of closing, we were $10,000 short. But I just had this confidence because when you walk by faith, how many you know, you know, you know, you know what God's going to do. And uh, a lady from our congregation whose husband did not attend, he, he wasn't spirit-filled and wasn't too interested in this spirit-filled walk, if you would, he happened to say to her that day, I borrowed $10,000 on my stocks. Uh, do you think you guys could use the money? Not meaning give it to us, meaning loan it to us. Uh, but she came and told me that day, so we were a little late for closing that day, but we made it and we had the 45000 down is what we needed at the time. How many know we serve a faithful God? Now, keep in mind, I, I wasn't praying for a loan. I was praying for the whole amount. <laughs> and, and so anyway, we did that with the idea that we would uh, pay it off or get a mortgage in three years. That would have been my desire because I've never been a person of debt. I, I've never had any debts really other than a mortgage on a house and uh, sometimes a car payment because when you're retarded like I am with mechanical things, it's not like you have a choice to buy a newer car or not. But anyway, so when it came to credit cards, I've never used them. When my wife worked, uh, we always figured that was extra income, so it was always money we saved to get us ahead. I, had, I actually owned two homes before I was married. Uh, I was reading an article the other day that says, something wrong with these millennials. They don't want to leave home. I'm like, I didn't leave home till I had to. I wanted to save my money. So I'm a millennial at heart. And anyway... I, I've always been a person who'd like to save and pay, so the Lord saved me this way so different than my own, and, uh, but it was his way that I would walk in, and a after a year, literally, we had to add on to that building because we needed Sunday school space, so we're not saving money to pay down the mortgage, and after three years, when it came time to get a mortgage, we had to double the size of the auditorium, so when we went to the bank, we had another mortgage, and that was when it was a floating interest rate, believe it or not. We had a 21.5% interest rate on our mortgage. I mean, well, that's a lot of interest. Now people are like, oh, no, interest rates are going up to 4% or 45 
I've lived the day, 21 and a half percent. And uh, you can be sure I looked at that bill every time it came, hoping it would go down at least a half percent or whatever. So that's when the Lord, in, in 1983, that's when I got this word that I was preaching on in that notebook that day, because I knew it, God was leading me to this property down here already to purchase. We have 52 acres here next to I-75. And again, I knew it would be way more than we could possibly afford again. And so I'm praying, Lord, what are we going to do? Where are we going to come up with that money, blah, blah, blah? And the Lord said, he said, I'm gonna, I told you I'd take you the way of spirit. You possess things that others would not possess. He said, people are literally going to come and say, wow, look what you've done for me. And you're going to say to them, but this is my father's house and this is his provision. And I said, oh, thank you, God. Amen. And I just knew I had faith to move forward. But I have to add this part today. When he said that, I thought, my father's house, my father's provision. I mean, I serve one rich God. I believe God owns everything. The Bible says he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He owns everything. Amen. So basically, part of my encouragement was I thought one day I'm going to be rolling in dough. <laughs> That's why God's been speaking to me about reassess the prophecies I gave to you a long time ago because you had a lot of your own thoughts in there. And I let you think that way, says the Lord, for a little while, because it got you through it. But now you got to realize, I'm trying to do something for you. You see, this is what I learned about the Father's provision. Even if it's the Father's provision, he's in the house, it's still going to be given by faith. So I realized that God wanted me to understand something. When I said I want you to live by faith, I didn't want you to live by faith until you got older and you could kind of retire and settle back and just roll in dough. Come on. And I'm saying this just so you can think about, well, how is it that you've put something on your prophecies or the words or, or what is it that you're telling God he has to do or how he has to do it? Your heavenly father who wants to take you to the realm of conquest says, I want you to realize you still are going to have to live by faith. And another part of this is whenever the father's provision is given, it always comes with instructions. We're moving into the Christmas season, and it was always a difficult time for me when I would buy presents because oftentimes the kids would want a present that said, some assembly required. Now, like I said, I have very bad mechanical thinking in my brain. I can never figure out how things work in that mechanical way. Some people are just natural. For me, it's nothing natural. To me, if you can do that, it's supernatural. So when it said some assembly required, I'm like, oh, God, what am I going to do now? But of course, I always called my brother Bill or my dad to fix it. But anyway, God has done the same thing as I walked with him every step of the way. Because he's my father and I'm his son, he always says, now remember, as I'm dishing this out, there's some assembly or at least instructions I want to give to you, says the Lord. This isn't just about you telling me what to do. This is about me demonstrating and teaching to you which way you are to go. And so this is so vitally important for us to understand as believers. Can you say amen to that? And we're living in a time when you've been under instruction, you've been being taught. So you've got to be aware, well, what is it that God's been teaching me? Because you don't just learn when you're in church. God teaches you Monday, Tuesday, come on. When you live by faith, you know that God's always teaching you something. Amen? Now, look at this next verse of Scripture because I, I believe it's so important that we would understand this. And I have over this the surrendered life. It seems out of context of what I'm saying, but Ephesians 6 says, Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in sincerity of heart as to Christ. Now, with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. With goodwill, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. And you masters do the same things to them, giving up threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. Now, people don't understand the Bible, read things like this, and they say, oh, look at the Bible. They talk about slavery. They endorse slavery. No, that's not what it was. The apostle Paul was trying to get people to live in the kingdom dimension 
At this point, he was not a revolutionary. His call wasn't to try to change the system, but he was telling them something very important. Everything you do, the Bible says in thought, word, or deed, do it in the name of the Father. Do it in his name. Understanding whatever you're doing in life should be do done as unto the Lord. Amen? Because this is the time, and this is the transition we are in the body of Christ, where God is telling us how important it is for us to understand Christianity lived in the everyday life is the Christianity that's going to bring glory to God. And we have to understand how important it is that in this day, that's why we had our concert on Friday. We have concerts here. We show movies. We want to have a Christian alternative because I believe Christians should have fun. And sometimes we got to create our environments for fun. But it's more than that. We, through our Beecher Institute, through our performing arts uh, school and the other things we do, we want to train people to understand God wants us in every area of life. He wants Christians in business. He wants Christians in entertainment. He wants Christians in politics. He wants us in every area of the light, shining the light of God to the world in which we live. Amen? So this is also part of our training. And we have someone in our church right now that just recently made a movie, somebody who was just telling us they were uh, got a part in a movie. And I, I believe, you know, obviously many of you are in business. And whatever your station of life, God is saying, do you understand this is for me, says the Lord, and this is where I can show and manifest my glory in the world in which we live. Going forward here in this next verse of Scripture, it tells us how important it is for us to see that God's going to do something that's going to provide a worldwide harvest. He said, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels, for as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause. Read that part with me. So the Lord will cause. I tell you, God's going to do something that's so amazing. He's going to cause righteousness and praise to spring forth. Where? Before all nations. You know, a lot of people have a negative outlook as to what? time frame we are in history and where is this all going i want to tell you where god says it's going he says and the glory of the lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the lord has spoken it says the lord and the glory of the lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea says the lord and god says there's going to be darkness upon the earth and even gross darkness the people but i'm going to cause a people of faith to arise and shine and the glory of the lord is going to be seen upon them, says the mighty God, and we need to know what God is doing. One day I was in prayer and I was just like, Lord, I, I, I remember the charismatic movement and I remember people always were running to church for the presence or running to the church to see you, hear from you. And Lord, I, I really want that people aren't running to church to see your presence anymore. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, will you quit looking back? I don't want you to look back. I want you to look forward because I'm placing my anointing now in a new level and in a new place. And this isn't a time to go and see or for the church to say, come and see. This is a time for the body of Christ to go and show, says the mighty God. That's why the Bible says, then these signs shall follow them that believe. In the last movement, we were always trying to find the signs. God says there's going to be some signs because some people are going to be going out in the highways and the byways, and they're going to know that God's going to do something that's exceedingly and abundantly above all they can ask or think. Can you praise the Lord, church? God has anointed Pastor Lauren to reach the church with a fresh message for this day. If you would like further information, we also invite you to visit us on the web at mountzion.org where you can hear more of Pastor Lauren's messages and find out about our ministries. If you're visiting the Metro Detroit area, we invite you to worship with us at Mount Zion Church. Thanks again for watching.